Hi, this is Shadi and today we will be discussing Mitsuyo Maeda self-defense techniques. We're going to be taking a look at his book, uh, Defensa Personal Oil Jiu Jitsu. There's no PDF, I'm sorry, this is from a hard copy, I took the photos myself. Um, but nonetheless, you can still see very much. Um, the reason why I'm making this video is that a lot of people still think that it's Maeda that have heavily influenced the major part of the ground aspect of the Gracie family. Uh, when in fact, you know, through Robert Drysdale, through research, you can see that it's a multiple judokas across multiple decades, like Yano, Omori, Ono Brothers, etc. And it's Maeda with his, through his indirect teachings um, with uh, Donato Pires and Jacinto Ferro, I would say he actually influenced the self-defense aspect of the Gracie family. They're very big on self-defense and I say it's thanks to Maeda. So here the first technique is actually a knife technique, an overhead knife technique. He gets close, he blocks the arm and then would proceed to do whatever technique. This is something that they've trained for years um, and relentlessly so please don't go out and try to do anything. Uh, again disclaimer. Here he finishes it with like a tegatami or a um, ude garami in case you happen to have the arms uh, tangled. Um, it's, I would say the submission works very well. Let's see here Elio Gracie do the same exact defense in this particular demonstration. So you have the overhead um, knife defense. A lot of people would say no one would attack like that but again I'm just showing you what's in the book. The second one here is a club defense. Uh, it's the same thing. You would intercept the strike, keeping it high, uh, very much like the Shomenuchi in Aikido. And then you perform an Atemi, getting closer, and then you either go around the back or do a particular throw like a hip toss or an arm lock. Here, Maeda goes around the back, performing an arm lock on the hand that's holding the club. Um, this is very good if you are someone that's um, carrying out an arrest, but it's best to throw and run away. Here, let's see Elio Gracie do the exact same entry against a blue belt Henry Gracie. He goes in, blocks the arm, but instead of going around the back, here he finishes with like an Osoto Otoshi uh, holding the club. The next one here is the most interesting one in my opinion, and that is a preemptive defense against um, someone trying to pull out a revolver or a gun. So you go in, you grab the hand before they even have a chance to pull it out and then you lock it uh, before they even pull out the gun and point it at you. Um, again, this is a preemptive defense against someone who's clearly going for his hand around his back to pull out the gun. Let's see Elio Gracie doing it. Here he blocks. Um, he cups the tricep, cups the back, and then locks the technique, locks uh, the arm. Mitsuyo Maeda actually grabs the wrist rather than cups the lower part of the lat. Um, so here, let's see Hickson how he's doing it. This is from his self-defense unit. The link will be in the description. If you can afford it, I'd say there's a lot to learn from it. It's very interesting. Um, so let's see how he actually does it. Um, cupping the tricep is very important so he cannot actually get his hand even higher as he's pulling out the revolver or the gun and cupping the tricep will actually or I'm sorry cupping the back will actually um, prevent them from going backwards and they will somewhat remain static if you are physically stronger than them so here uh, Hickson is showing you that if you have your lower hand up you can actually still uh, pull out the gun so you have to have your hand low in order to prevent them from moving their arm but my personal opinion is to actually grab the wrist very much like Maeda. Um, here he explains that you have to keep your shoulders relaxed and your stance, your base so they cannot retreat backwards with their step. This is the quote unquote invisible Jiu Jitsu of this. That's why he's holding in this particular uh, manner. So here he proceeds to here, if they are physically stronger than you, you can actually follow them, but you have to stay relaxed uh, in order to control the arm. This is the most important part, and that is to control the arm. Um, but again, personally, I think it's best to control the wrist, and then you get them in front of you and lock the arm. Now, the next one is another 
uh, gun defense, but this one is they're actually pointing. Notice here he's actually grabbing Maeda's blazer or jacket and pointing the gun at him. And Maeda is having his arms uh, up in the air. Um, the assailant has one leg forward, one leg backward, uh, very much like a Shizentai in Judo. So let's see the defense itself. Okay, notice a few things. First, Maeda is grabbing the hand that's grabbing his jacket. And here, um, the gun arm is actually lowered, grabbing the wrist, controlling the direction of the barrel. It's very important to know that controlling the um, gun arm um, is actually has to keep it low. And then Maeda is on his side, uh, catching him. Um, it's a bit different from the demonstration that we're going to see, but the same principles still being applied, uh, especially the finish with the wrist lock. Um, here you have the leg uh, in front. You can easily knee to the gut by lifting your knee upwards. Let's see here. Hickson actually goes to the side of the gun because Pedro here is not actually grabbing him by the jacket. So he actually uh, goes into detail more into how to actually push away the gun. Again, this is you have you need to have years of training. Uh, you need to drill this relentlessly and not just go do this from the first time. So please disclaimer. Um, he actually pushes the gun away and actually retract retracts his head at the same time as he's explaining uh, here and then goes in grabs the barrel which, because it's very crucial because you control the line of fire and then goes into the arm that's actually holding the gun but very much like Maeda he goes to his side and actually lowers the hand that's controlling the gun very much like Maeda and then here finishes off with this wrist lock um, overhooking the tricep is very important because that's what controls the arm and pushing the barrel down will keep you safe. Getting to the side, uh, disarming through the barrel and then finishing off with a wrist lock. Um, here, again, it's a tug. If there is like a tugging war going on, uh, make sure you always have the barrel away from you. And then going to the side and then he, if he's too strong, you actually can perform a temi and then disarm the gun or the revolver and then proceed to wrist lock. So another thing to, to understand is which hand is actually holding the gun, here he explains, because if he's holding the gun, if you push the hand that's not holding the gun, he still actually can point the gun at you. So it's very important to see which hand is actually holding the gun so you can push it, retract your head and then get to the side pushing the barrel down much like Maeda and then finishing with the wrist lock. Um, here is the wrist lock that Hickson was performing, very much similar to Maeda uh, on the side, holding the wrist lock, overhooking the tricep. So you can clearly see the self-defense influence came from Maeda uh, through the teachings of Jacinto Ferro and Donato Pires. So the reason again why I made this video is a lot of people still talk about Maeda's influence on the ground, his lineage, what did he actually know on the ground. Um, his Newaza, I would say, it wasn't as much as developed as like Jeyo Omori, Oda, uh, Ono Brothers, because the Newaza revolution, I would say, only started when Maeda, or it was already beginning to shape up when Maeda actually left. Um, the 1910s, I would say, it's when the uh, Judo's Newaza truly has been crafted in Kyoto through the likes of um, Kanemitsu Yaichibe and of course Oda Tsunetane um, and their disciples like the Ono brothers and then later on you would see Yano and Omori going for the Brazil and the Ono brothers and then you would see the ground aspect truly being developed uh, throughout the 20th century in Brazil and it's not that you know Maeda came and then just here's my groundwork uh, Maeda himself uh, I would say he was more of a self-defense enthusiast if you read the old writings of Kano you would say that the stand-up the self-defense aspect are far more important um, the ground aspect can be good for competition um, in a controlled environment one against one etc so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on, Pat on Patreon, I have exclusive content 
for the patrons only. I post there once a week. Um, your support would be greatly appreciated. And of course, don't forget to check out Josh Simon's shop for articles and t-shirts. This was Shady, and as always, thank you for listening.